possibilities. To me, I have been a farm laborer before. I've been a cleaner before. I've been a taxi driver before. And today I'm standing here as Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, trying to be President of the Republic of Ghana. And it is all the grace of God that has made that possible. When I wanted to contest for the leadership of the New Patriotic Party, many people did not think the New Patriotic Party would elect me. Many people thought it was not possible. After all, many people had said that our party has only been electing Akan leaders. And so they would not elect this man from Wale Wale to become the leader. But I said, it is only God who chooses leaders. And if God says it will be possible, then it will be possible. So we contested. We were 10 of us who contested. And nine of us were can and I was the tenth one. But the party decided overwhelmingly by a vote of 61% to vote for Dr. Mahmoud. And never in the history of the MPP has any first time contestant gotten 61%. This is the highest for any first time contestant, not in Dubai, not Kufur, not a Kufur. So it was the grace of God that allowed the whole party, regardless of tribe, regardless of religion, everybody coalesced around me and voted for me. It shows that in the MPP, we all belong. No matter whether you are from the north, the south, the east or the west, Muslim or Christian, you are part of the new patriotic party. You belong to the new patriotic party. I believe in impossibilities, as I said. I believe that if you elect me to become President of the Republic, I'm going to lead a major transformation of Ghana to become a modern, prosperous country. If you look at my work, in support of the president over the last eight years as vice president you will see my philosophy in governance my philosophy is inclusive governance to make sure our development is broad, broad based covers all the country everybody that is what i want to see in ghana every region every district every religion every tribe and uh, the persons with disabilities the lepers women the youth we should carry everybody along and i want that to be my philosophy if i become a president and continue in that when we were campaigning for 2016 election we made a major promise to the people of ghana that we will bring free senior high school education to Ghana. And we made that promise because education is the best way to lift our people out of poverty. That is the best way to lift our people out of poverty. It is the great equalizer. When we said we will bring free SHS to Ghana, our opponents said we were lying. They said it was a 419 promise and that it was not possible. But we said, by the grace of God, it is possible. So, when we got into office in 2017, the president called me and asked me, can we implement free SHS this year? That is 2017. I said, yes, Mr. President, we can implement free SHS this year. So the first, budget in March 2017 we 
put in free SHS and started it in 2017. We've operated free senior high school education for the last eight years and 5.7 million children have gone to senior high school free under our It is unprecedented and what gladdens my heart is that when we came into office in senior high school there were more boys than girls in senior high school. For every 100 boys, we had 68 girls. But today, after eight years of senior, free senior high school education, today there are more girls than boys in senior high school. Today, for every 100 boys, we have 106 girls. And what is also remarkable is that the performance of the students in the senior high schools has gone up. Initially, people were worried that quality will come down. When you look at the WAXI exams, in 2016, the pass rate was 45%. By 2023, it has gone up to 64%. So the quality has gone up. And if you look at it, within West Africa, not just Ghana, all the countries which write the West African exams, the WAXI, you will see that in 2023, the top three students in WAXI exams in West Africa, one, two, three, all came from Ghana. You also see that in 2016, we had major challenges in the senior high schools. Even chalk was a problem. Chalk was a problem. But today, today, we are buying computer tablets to distribute to every single senior high school student in Ghana. All the students are going to get tablets, computer tablets, and all their textbooks will be on the tablet. This is unprecedented, and we are not only doing it for the students. The teachers are also getting laptops. Every teacher, from kindergarten teacher to senior high school teacher, every teacher is getting a laptop, and the one teacher, one laptop. So far, 98, 98% of the teachers have already gotten their laptops and we are going to finish the distribution for the rest. So all the teachers will have laptops and the senior high school students, all of them will have the computer tablets as well. We have also restored the teacher training allowances that were cancelled. We have restored the nursing training allowances that were cancelled. And it's not only free SHS that we have brought, introduced. We have also brought free technical and vocational education to Ghana. All our students who are going for TVET are going for free now as well to, to learn the skills. We have also brought in other uh, initiatives like the planting for food and jobs, they brought in initiatives like the Agenda 111 uh, hospitals where we are building 111 hospitals across Ghana. It's unprecedented and, and many of the hospitals are way over 70% complete. We will commission some this year and commission the rest next year. But when we finish the 111 hospitals, we will provide jobs for 70,000 people in these 111 hospitals. We have also revamped the National Ambulance Service. When we came into office, Ghana had 37 ambulances under the National Ambulance Service. So we brought in the policy of one constituency, one ambulance. And today Ghana has 307 ambulances under the National Ambulance. We have also 
resuscitated the national health insurance. It was collapsing. We were going to cash and carry. And so we've had to put in resources in the national health insurance and increase the coverage. Today, childhood cancer is covered free under national health insurance. Today, sickle cell sufferers are looked after free under national health insurance. Today, people who have kidney problems and need dialysis, dialysis for kidney patients above 60 and below 18 is free under national health insurance. And just last week, we've added mental health uh, diseases to the national health insurance. So we've been able to lift it up. We have also brought in drones, drones to deliver medicines to our health facilities. Now, the story of the drones for me is a personal story because um, in 2002, uh, in Tamale Teaching Hospital, uh, my father was not well and was giving, uh, being operated on. So the doctors came out that evening and said we needed blood because my father was losing blood and we rushed to the blood bank and it was locked. We were looking for the man who was in charge, we couldn't find him. We ran around Tamale looking for him, we couldn't find him. Before long, my father had passed away. He didn't get the blood. This was in 2002. So when we came into office in 2017, by 2018 I had read an article that was uh, talking about a company in America that had brought drone technology to deliver blood, to deliver medicines, to deliver vaccines, in the cases of emergency, to different parts and hospitals in a country. You go to a farm, you get a snake bite, you need anti-snake serum urgently, and the drones can bring it. When I heard about this technology, I said, wow, if this technology was around in 2002 in Tamale, my father would still be alive. So I got up and I took a team and we went to San Francisco and I went to meet this company Zipline and I said to them, your technology will be very useful in Ghana. It will save a lot of lives. So come and set up in Ghana. They agreed and they have set up six medical drone delivery centers in Ghana. And today we are distributing, we are delivering medicines vaccines, blood, and other things to 2,700 hospitals and health facilities in Ghana. Now, what is, what is remarkable, because we went to America and brought this technology, but what is remarkable is that today, in the whole world, Ghana is now the leading medical drone delivery service in the whole world. The whole world. We are leading. And what is even more remarkable is that all the drone centers are manned by Ghanaians. Not one foreigner is manning the drone centers. All are now manned by Ghanaians. We insisted that Ghanaians be trained to man all these drone centers. And so now we are saving lives every day. And, and recently, a few months ago, the U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris was on record praising Ghana for taking the lead in medical drone delivery in the world. And now the U.S. is about to start doing medical drone delivery themselves. So Ghana is, is, is doing very well in that area. We also have done other policies. I want to mention three in the area of digitalization, and you'll see later on why I'm mentioning those three in particular. First of all, we did the Ghana card to get a national ID database. So today, 85% of Ghanaian adults, 18 million people, have been issued with Ghana cards. And the Ghana card is proving to be one of our most important assets. 
is a digital identity, but the Ghana card is linked to your tax identification number, your SIM card, your bank account, it's your SNIP number, it's your NHIA number, it's linked to your DVLA passport and all of that. With that identity, you cannot get lost in the system because you almost everything you are going to do requires your Ghana card number now. So we have a unique identity which is helping us because today, because it's a unique identity, the Ghana card is really helping us in the fight against ghost workers on the public sector payroll. This was a big problem for Ghana. Many people collecting salary without going to work. So one of the problems for ghosts is that they don't have fingerprints. Ghosts don't have fingerprints. So when we issued the Ghana card, I said, let's take the card to go and catch the ghost. And match everybody on the payroll with their Ghana card. The first institution we went to was SNIT. So we went to SNIT and we matched all the pensioners with the Ghana card. And we found 29,000 ghost pensioners on the SNIT payroll. 29,000. We, we've taken them out and we saved SNIT 400 million Ghana cities plans. We went to uh, National Service Secretariat and we found 44,000 ghost National Service personnel. We took him out, we've saved 300 million Ghana cities. We have wiped out all the ghost workers on controlling accountant general payroll. So today, thanks to the Ghana card, we can say Ghana, the public sector, has no ghost workers on our payroll anymore. Today, because of the unique identity the Ghana card provides, if you are a student and you want a loan, student loan, you will no longer ask for a guarantor because the Ghana card is sufficient. You cannot run away or know where you are. So we don't need a guarantor anymore. And the Ghana card is now the guarantor for student loans in Ghana. Today, we have done something unique with the Ghana card for an African country. We have gone to register the Ghana card at the International Civil Aviation Organization in Canada, Montreal. The Ghana card has been taken through all their steps. It has passed all their steps. So today, the Ghana card is recognizable in 44,000 airports and border points across the world. 44,000. So if, for example, you happen to travel anywhere in the world, whether it's China, whether it's America, Japan, Saudi Arabia, uh, Senegal, anywhere in the world, if you lose your passport, for example, your passport gets missing, you can take your Ghana card and board a plane from China or Saudi Arabia to Ghana. With the Ghana. We are the only country in Africa where you can do this. We are the only country where we have gone through our national ID card to this. Secondly, we brought digital addressing to Ghana. When we came into office, most of the country did not have addresses, most houses. Most villages you didn't have. But an address system is very important. So I've made a proposal that we should go digital. Let's leverage GPS technology and provide addresses to every house, every village will, will have a, an address system in every house, regardless of where it is. Even a kiosk anywhere will have an address. Many people did not think it was possible because no country in Africa had done it. But I said it was possible, and we have done it. We have done a digital property addresses. Every house in Ghana has a digital address. And Ghana is the second country in the whole world with a digital property address system. The whole world, we are the second country. The third problem we addressed when we came was that most Ghanaians did not have a bank account. 70% of Ghanaians did not have a bank account. But you cannot really develop any country when most of your population are outside the financial system. We call it financial exclusion. They have been excluded. 
If 70% are excluded, you are in trouble. You can't move very far in the economic development. So what was the case in Ghana was that many people had Momo accounts, but not bank accounts. So, but the Momo accounts were limited. If you had Vodafone, you couldn't transfer money to MTN. If you had MTN, you couldn't transfer money to Airtel, Tigo. You couldn't move money from a Momo account to a bank account, or from a bank account to a Momo account. So, I, I made the suggestion that let us bring in a system that effectively makes the Momo account a bank account. Let's transform the Momo account into a bank account. And the system I proposed was mobile money interoperability. Basically, make the mobile money interoperable with a bank account. And how do you do this? When I proposed this, many people didn't quite understand it. They said it wasn't possible because no country in Africa had done it. But what, was to, uh, what I was proposing and what we have done is we put all the banks in the country and all the mobile companies on one platform, one digital platform so that you can move money from the bank account to a Momo account to another Momo account to another bank account to a Momo account all under one. So that is what was called interoperability. Because no country had done it in Africa, the people doubted whether we could do it. But we have done it. And Ghana is the first country in Africa to do it and you can move money through different um, channels. And so with, with that now, the Momo account in Ghana is very different from the Momo account in other countries because the Momo account in Ghana is effectively a bank account because of the interoperability. So because of that, today, if somebody sends you money from abroad, it comes straight to your mobile phone. You don't have to go to Western Union again to cash the money. It comes straight to your mobile phone. You can stay at home, lie on your bed, and renew your national health insurance on your mobile phone. You don't have to go anywhere. So we were able to do this. We are the first country to do it in Africa. By the way, America doesn't have mobile money interoperability. Canada doesn't have it, the UK. We are ahead of them in this technology. We are ahead of them in this technology. So we were able to do these things. Now, the time has come, I believe, to go to the next level. And this is why I want us to support me to become president. I believe that as president, I can take Ghana to the next level. We have put in place a lot of foundational pillars that I want us to now move to the next level to, to transform Ghana and to create jobs for our youth. If you look at, I'm going to move into one major policy I want to bring if God makes me president of this country. One of the major things that we you see in the advanced countries like the UK, Canada, France, Germany, Australia, all the advanced countries, you will see that life is easier over there than in Ghana or other African countries. Life there is easier in the advanced countries because they have one system that makes life easier for them. That system is called a credit system. That system is called a credit system. If you live in US, Germany, Japan, UK, all those advanced countries, if you want to buy something and you don't have the money to buy all of it at once, you can put a deposit on it, whether it's a TV, a fridge, a car, or a house. You can put a deposit and pay small, small, small. After three years, you pay for your TV. After five years, you've paid for your car. After 30 years, you've paid for your house. That is the system. That is the system that works because everybody in that system has what is called a credit score. A credit score gives you the ability to obtain credit. 
in Ghana, on the other hand, and in other African countries, we do everything on cash. If you don't have cash, you can't get your, your, your TV or your car or your house. So everything is cash-based. So we have been thinking for the last, since we came into office, about how to bring the credit system to Ghana. What obtains in the advanced world, how do we bring it here in Ghana? There are three necessary conditions, three key things that are in place in the advanced countries that we didn't have in Ghana and therefore we couldn't operate the system. In the advanced countries, the three key pillars are one, everybody has a unique identity. You have an identity card or an identity number. Everybody has that. So if you are giving credit to somebody, you know who, who it is. It's, they cannot disappear. Otherwise, the system will not work. So you need to know who you are giving the credit to. So identity, unique identity is number one. The second thing, condition for a credit system, everybody has an address. So if you give your TV or your car to someone and they are paying small, small, if they don't pay, you can go to their house you know the address and pick up your TV or your car. So everybody has an address. The third is everybody has a bank account. Because if you are going to pay the credit, you use the banking system to pay. So these are the three key pillars. So when we came into office, we started putting these things together for Ghana. We have done the Ghana card. Everybody has a unique identity. So we have ticked that box. The second one, we have done the digital property address system. So everybody, every home has an address. Everybody has an address. The third thing, the bank account, we have done mobile money interoperability. So everybody has a bank account. If you have a mobile account or a normal bank account, everybody has a bank account. So the three things that are necessary for a credit scoring system to come into being, we have now put in place in Ghana. And so the last two years, we have been working to be able to start the credit scoring system in Ghana. In Africa, it's only one country that has it, and that is South Africa. The others are not effective. Egypt and Mauritius, they are not effective. But South Africa has an effective credit scoring system. So we have been working over the last two years to begin the credit scoring in Ghana so that our people can be able to buy things and pay small, 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 like in the advanced countries. I thought that by next year, 2025, we would have completed all the work. But by the grace of God, we have finished the work as of now. As of now, the work is complete. So Ghana is going to start credit scoring next month in November. We will be the second country in Africa. Everybody with a Ghana card will have a credit score. Everybody with a Ghana card will have it. And your credit score will allow you to get credit. And we are going to, as I say, be the second country. So on the 7th of November, God willing, uh, it is going to be a historic day for Ghana. We will launch the credit scoring system for Ghana and will be the second country in Africa to do so. The second policy I want to bring as president is to invest in agriculture. That will be my major priority. We are over 60% of our population are farmers. So if this economy is going to do well, then agriculture must do well. If agriculture doesn't do well, the economy cannot do well because most of our people are in agriculture. And so I want us to support our farmers. I want us to build irrigation facilities. We have water. The Volta River is out here. We are currently importing rice and tomatoes and, and onions and so on. I, don't, I believe Ghana doesn't have to do that. If we support our farmers with fertilizers, with money, with technology and irrigation, 
we will be able to produce a lot of food. And so I'm going to focus on our farmers. And just as we have done the drip machines, for every district we have brought drip machines, excavator, roller, grader, backhoe, tipper truck, for all districts to build roads. I'm going to do the same for all districts to bring equipment for farmers. For every district, we will have a district great mechanization center. So that farmers will have access to technology, to equipment, to farm uh, in the farming district. So we are going to set up district agri mechanization centers across all the farming districts in Ghana. And I think it will help boost our farming and our, our farmers generally. The second or uh, the third policy I want to introduce has to do with our electricity bills. Our electricity bills are high. They are high. And I want to bring a new policy that will bring down the electricity bills. The reason why our electricity bills are high is that we are importing oil and gas to generate electricity. And on the world market, oil and gas prices are high. So when they come in, they increase the electricity cost of generation. I want to take a bold decision and Ghana to take a bold decision next year by the grace of God. I want Ghana to step away from a dependence on oil and gas and go for solar power. Solar power to generate electricity. God has given us the sun for free. We wake up in the morning and he's beating us and we are even running away from the sun. But we can harness the solar power and generate electricity with it. I'm going to uh, get 2,000 megawatts, harness 2,000 megawatts of solar power and that will bring down the cost of electricity by 50%. We'll reduce it by 50% for our people. If we do that, it will increase production because businesses can do more if the cost of electricity is less and bring more jobs for our youth. The other policy that I am bringing is a policy called Buy Ghana First policy. Buy Ghana First means that we should, government should not be importing if the goods can be made in Ghana. So first look into Ghana. I went to Volta Star Textile uh, Limited in Joapong, nice factory, but they didn't have work to do. Why? Because the school uniforms and things they were making are now being imported from China. And so there's no work for our people. And I said, this is wrong. In fact, that's where I formulated the Buy Ghana First Policy. I said, we are bringing in a law when I become president to make sure that all government procurement will first be from Ghana. If there's nobody who can make it in Ghana, then we can look outside. But for as long as we can make it in Ghana, we'll procure it in Ghana and provide the jobs for our people in Ghana. So that is the Buy Ghana First Policy that we are going to introduce. I'm also going to help women traders. Women traders need capital. They need soft loans to expand their businesses. So I'm bringing in the Women's Trade Empowerment Fund. The Women's Trade Empowerment Fund will provide loans to traders. What is different about this is that this is not a bank. The Women's Trade Empowerment Fund is not a bank because a lot of our women traders are very informal. Someone is just selling, you know, Wachi or Banku or whatever and wants to expand. They need a loan. If you say go to the bank, they are even intimidated to go to the bank. You get to the bank, they say, bring this document. They will not be able to provide it. No, we are setting up the Women's Trade Empowerment Fund. And the only requirement that the woman will need to get the loan is the Ghana card. And that is it. That is it. The only requirement to access the loan is your Ghana card. And you will get the loan. So we are going to help women expand their businesses and that will also create more jobs. I'm also going to bring in new policy regarding chieftaincy. 
the chiefs in Ghana have been sidelined since independence in the governance of our country. And I think it's a mistake. You cannot govern this country effectively without the chiefs. And we have made a mistake. So I want to amend section 63 of the Chieftaincy Act and give more powers to the chiefs in the governance of this country. There are so many cases that can be settled in your palaces, but they all end up going to court and clog the court system. And if the chiefs who are the owners of the land don't have authority, you will have indiscipline in our communities. And so we are going to amend section 63, but not only that, we are going to resource the palaces. At the moment, we only pay paramoy chiefs a very small allowance. It's not a living allowance. So I'm changing that. We are going to pay living allowances to paramoy chiefs, queen mothers, and divisional chiefs in the chieftaincy institution. Paramount chiefs, queen mothers, and divisional chiefs will receive living allowances. I'm also going to help the churches and the Islamic institutions. The churches and Islamic institutions do a lot of work for Ghana. They build a lot of schools, they build a lot of hospitals. Now, if you, but we don't really support them. All they do is collect donations to build schools and hospitals. If the foreigners are coming to build schools and hospitals, whatever they are bringing in equipment and all of that, we call them development partners. Once we call them development partners, they don't pay duty on the equipment that they are bringing. If the church is bringing the same equipment, the church has to go and pay duty. The Islamic institution has to pay duty. I'm going to change that. I'm going to classify all the churches and all the Islamic institutions as development partners. Partners. So they will be entitled to the same things as we give the foreigners in terms of incentives. So then we will be able to do that. Tokyo, Mabao, ladies and gentlemen, you see that there's been a lot of conversation in Ghana about LGBTQ+. The practice where uh, women are supposed to be able to marry women and men are supposed to be able to marry men. Under a Baumia president, it will never come on in Ghana. We will never agree. That practice cannot come on. We will reject it completely. It doesn't, the Bible doesn't allow it. The Quran doesn't allow it. Our traditions don't allow it. Our culture don't, doesn't allow it. Our values don't. We will not agree. We will defend our system. We will defend our country, no matter the consequences. We will stand fair, otherwise we will destroy our country. We will not allow our country to be destroyed by that practice. So we will not agree to that. I want to you know, empower Ghanaians, especially persons with disabilities. They have been discriminated against for a long time. I want to bring in two policies. Under my government, all persons with disabilities will go to universities, training colleges, and all tertiary education for free under my government. All persons with disabilities will go free tertiary education. Secondly, we are going to create a, a quota, a percentage of all government recruitment will go to persons with disabilities so that we can get the benefit of their intellect, even if they may be weak physically. They are very sharp in mind. So we have to do a positive discrimination in their favor to bring them into the workforce. And that is what we are going to do. I'm also going to make it very easy for Ghanaians to obtain a passport. And all our young people who want passports, if you look at the passport application, you take the form, you have to add your birth certificate and all of that, answer all the questions. But when I look, at the passport form all the questions they ask on the form are already on the ghana card we have all the information that the passport form is looking for it's all on the organa card so from next year god willing anybody with a ghana card who wants a passport does not have to fill a form anymore 
You just pay your fee and we will print your passport for you. We have our biometrics, we have your picture, we have everything. We have all the information. So you don't need to go and fill another form. We'll do it for you. We are going to also change the regulations on driver's license. The driver's license is another uh, instrument for us in Ghana. It's valid for six years. But every two years, you have to go to DVLA to renew your driver's license. Every two years. So I'm changing it. The driver's license will now be valid for 10 years and you will renew every five years. Every five years, you will renew it. But it will be valid for 10 years. So that it creates less of a problem for everybody. For our teachers and our nurses. The other president could force time Teachers and nurses were given car import duty waivers and it was cancelled under the former president Mohammed's time. I'm going to restore the car import duty waivers for teachers and nurses uh, in this. One of the things that I want you to think about as we go into this election is that there are two of us who are contesting. It's Dr. Baumia and the former president. These are the two. But if you look at the work that we have done, and you ask the former president and Dr. Baumia, and I've asked the former president this question, what one policy can he point to one that he has brought into Ghana to benefit Ghana? Just one. The, he can't mention one. Just one. I challenged him to mention one, but he can't. If you ask me, I can mention 33 policies that are brought into government to help that. 33, 33 policies that I have brought to help Ghanaians. So I believe that if you are looking for somebody who can take Ghana to the next level, then it is Dr. Mahmoud Baumia who can take Ghana to the next level. The other factor is that if you look at it, a former president can only be president for four years because he's been president for four and a half years already. So when, you know, if he becomes a president, it means he won't come back to Central, Central Tomo to give an account for the work he has done. It will be goodbye because that is it. He won't go for another election. But Dr. Baumia, he, I can be president by the grace of God for eight years. In four years' time, I have to come back here and stand here and give an account of what I have done. I have to come back here. I have to show how these ongoing projects have been completed. The Mafe Kumasi market. Isn't it? I have to show. I have to show whether we are able to do irrigation facilities or tourism or the agricultural institute that the Togbe has asked. These are all requests of, of Central Town. So when, I'm, when I get to Jubilee House, I have that in my mind. I've written everything down. I know this is what I have to do for the people of Central Town. So when I come in four years time and I give an account, you will say, Dr. Baumia, well done. We are, we are, this continue, continue, continue. So, this is why I believe that you should give the, me the steer so that I can drive us to the next level. Now can drive us to the next level. I believe that I'm not alone. I come with Godwin. And if you vote for Dr. Baumia, you should also vote for Godwin. Number one on the ballot. Number one on the ballot. We want to take Ghana to a next level. We want to take Ghana to another level. Give us the chance. Give me the chance. Thank you very much. Again, 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 again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, please stand this day. Chowei, Chowei, last year, 
a young lady from Central Town here took part in Miss World. There were 112 young ladies. Even though she couldn't bring back the crown, she made it to the top 20. When she was going, she approached the vice president and he generously helped her. She is here today to make a presentation okay. uh, to thank the vice president. So, William Wallace. William Wallace. But this is for you to remember that the girl or the lady you helped in Central Talk remembers you and says God bless you. Thank you. Your Excellency, Central Talk people say stay a little bit longer. You have to talk to you, remember, and on another general issue, you have to have a next president. Yeah. 